Hi there, welcome back to France Fit Video Sports Blog. It's been a big week in sport, but obviously the big story is that John Terry has been stripped of the England captaincy. Now, I believe this is a good thing. John Terry is currently involved in a race route. Now, obviously, John is uh, innocent until proven guilty, but the fact that he ha will have this court case hanging over him until after the European Championships, it would have just been a large pressure on the England team, a massive distraction, and w especially given the fact that uh, England have struggled at major championships over the past uh, few years, they don't need extra pressure. Whether he's in the squad is another, is another matter, but the fact that he's no longer captain will mean that uh, Capello won't be compelled to pick him. Now obviously, now the question remains, who should be John Terry's replacement? Rio Ferdinand, uh, the former captain, has already ruled himself out. So many people will say that Steven Gerrard is the obvious choice. However, Gerrard himself has been struggling with injuries. He's only featured um, a few times for Liverpool this season. He had a long injury layoff in 2011. So his fitness really will be the key question about whether he should be appointed captain. But if not Gerrard, then who? Lampard? Maybe Joe Hart, some people are saying. I personally think that Joe Hart is too young. Maybe in a few years, when he's got a bit more experience, he'll make a good England captain. But not at the moment, not at Euro 2012. He's too young, he doesn't need the pressure. He just needs to, to be allowed to play in his first tournament without the pressure of being captain as well. So therefore, I think you've got to look at Frank Lampard as maybe the man to lead England in the tournament if Gerrard is not fit. Now, the Rugby Six Nations has got back underway. We've already seen uh, France beat Italy and England just about overcome Scotland. Now, for England, this is a crucial tournament, especially after the, last, uh, the debacle of the last World Cup in New Zealand. England have to make sure that there are no off-the-field problems. There's a new man in charge in Stuart Lancaster, and he's got the perfect start under his belt with a win in the Calcutta Cup up at Murrayfield. However, he's got to make sure that the players who were in New Zealand and who have remained in the squad, obviously a lot of them aren't, don't rock the boat. That He's got to make sure that England are almost act like monks during this tournament. You know, he's really got to do that. Moving on. Uh, Arsenal recorded a big win today. 7-1 at home to, uh, home to Blackburn. But I don't want to talk about Arsenal. They're not having the best of seasons. Uh, compared to what they've had over the past few years. But I want to talk about Blackburn and Steve Keane. Now, a lot has been made about uh, the fact that Steve Keane is not very popular with the Blackburn faithful, and neither are their owners, the Venkies. Now, how much damage are foreign owners, um, let's not say for reckless owners, doing to English football? We saw how uh, J Tom Hicks and George Dillet took Liverpool to the verge of administration and the abyss. Blackburn Rovers, uh, we have to remember are champions in 1995 and they are being basically driven into the championship by these owners who know you could argue know very little about the tradition you get these owners coming from afar just basically coming into own of club because it's the fashionable thing to do I think in England we need to seriously look at tightening up who can own a football club in Germany there are very strict rules about who can own a football club and how much of a football club they can own um, in Germany, 49% of the club has to be owned by, um, can be owned by one person, and 51% has to be owned by the fans. So, it's got to, it's got to change the situation. Otherwise, we are going to see clubs going to the wall. One case in particular is Darlington, uh, a very proud club who now find themselves in the conference, who are basically fighting at the moment to stay in existence, and there is a chance that they may not even complete the season, and this is not a good thing. And finally this week, uh, we've got, uh, in the weather forecast over here in England, we've got the big freeze. And, to, and uh, this weekend, we've seen a lot of fixtures postponed in League Two. Only one of them uh, got underway on Saturday down in Plymouth, which no surprise me there, right in the south, uh, south uh, west uh, of the country. Uh, it, and it used to be that uh, matches, uh, you know, they've all been uh, postponed for frozen pitch. We've got snow on the way. Don't call them off, because matches in the snow are great. Get the orange ball out. We haven't seen the orange ball for a while. I want to see more matches in the snow. A few matches last season were postponed because of safety issues around the ground. But I say football uh, is an all-weather sport and uh, it's a lot of fun in the snow. So get the orange ball out and let's keep playing. Let's not have too many uh, postponements because that will just create havoc towards the end of the season. So I'll be coming back to you next week. I uh, hope you enjoyed this book. Like I said, 
uh, last week. If you want to get in contact with me, please do. Uh, the email address is francispittsport at gmail.com. And if you have uh, any issues that you'd like me to raise or any points, leave a comment or email me and I'll deal with them in future blogs. So uh, enjoy uh, the rest of your week in sport, whoever you support. I imagine Arsenal fans will be very pleased with their weekend's work and England rugby fans very relieved. So uh, thanks very much for tuning in and I'll see you again soon.